Hi everyone, it's Eric from Dumb Game Dev, and today we're going to be talking about raycasting. Specifically, what is raycasting? How can we use it? How can we master the basic, basics of raycasting for our Unity project? So first off, let's just say what is raycasting. So this is shooting an invisible line or laser, I like to think about it, out towards in a direction to get information about what was hit. So if we actually check the Unity documentation here, we can see uh, you know, what physics recasting, all the parameters it takes, and you're probably thinking, okay, C-sharp, parameters, um, whatever. But we'll look at this using Playmaker, but it is here in the documentation in case you want to check it out. And more importantly, what we want is what the raycast has hit. And this is called a raycast hit in Unity. It's very aptly named, of course. And what it's going to give us is all of this information here. So let's talk about what that is. Actually, let's just back up one sec, sec and just say, why do we want to raycast? So, uh, you know, what information does it get us? Well, it tells us what was hit with that invisible line. It tells us where on the object was it hit. It tells us where in 3D space was the object that it hit. And what angle was it hit? And you know, was it even hit? So, for example, imagine we're using this to fire a gun, which is a very common way to use raycasting. The raycast is going to send an invisible line out at the direction of the barrel and say, you know, was something hit? Was a bad guy hit or a wall hit? And it's going to say, if a wall was hit or a bad guy was hit, you know, what should we do? And also we want to know where on the object was it hit? because we might want to uh, you know, do more damage if it's hit on the head or do less damage if it's hit on the leg. We also might want to know what angle it was hit at and of course where on the object because we might want to spawn, uh, for example, some blood effects that face towards the shooter and not away. So we want to know that uh, trajectory. We also might want to know where in 3D space was that object at that time. For example, we might just shoot a lot of um, recasts in various directions to figure out where something was or is. Lastly, I didn't actually add on here is what is the distance? The distance is a, a, also a common use case for raycast. It can tell us how far away something was. Now, a couple of use cases. We talked about weapon shooting. This is one way of sh shooting a weapon and a very common one. The other is ground checking. So if you have characters that are jumping on walls or floors, you want to check that the character is actually on the ground or not on the ground or falling. This is common. Collision avoidance is also common. So moving forwards, backwards, left or right, we want to see if we're hitting a wall. Maybe our character is jumping to the left. Um, so he's an AI. He's jumping to the left. And you want to check that if there's a wall there first or not before you jump into it. Lastly, here we have, in my use case, of course there's so many use cases, is line of sight checks. We want to see if something can actually see something else or if it's, um, you know, uh, able, yeah, you know, able to see it. So this is a good way to do that. Okay, jumping out of the documentation and getting right into the Unity editor, I have a very simple scene set up. I just have a sphere and a cube and the scene and nothing else. And one thing to remember is when you are recasting into another object, it does have a collider. So make you know, it needs to have a collider. So make sure you have a box collider on it or a sphere collider or a mesh collider or whatever it may be. It does need a collider. However, unlike collisions, you do not need a rigid body. So it just needs to have a collider for sure. So what we want to do is just raycast from this, um, let's say we'll use the cube outwards and see what we can hit. So I'm going to choose add component. You can type FSM and then choose Playmaker FSM. Edit that FSM and we already have a first state here. Now, in the actions, of course, as you can guess, you're just going to type raycast, and I have already done so here. And I'm just going to use the standard raycast. Now, we have a bunch of options to fill out here, and they're important that we get the right options. Otherwise, we might end up getting frustrated with raycast, which can be sort of a confusing concept for people starting with C Sharp or Playmaker. So what we need to know first is from what game object or from what position. So
So this is an either or, not a both. And if we hold our mouse over here, it will tell us that. Start Raycast at a Vector3 world position. So where in the world do you want to start your line? But we're just going to start it right from this owner. So which is the cube. So it's going to shoot starting from the middle of this cube. Now we need to know what direction we want to shoot it in. So it doesn't, notice it doesn't ask us where you want it to end, but instead in what direction. Okay, in this case, we're just going to use a simple little trick. We're going to look at our game, our simple game cube here, and it's a little bit hard to see here our XYZ. Let's just go to my lighting for a minute and choose the background to be none. And there we can see this uh, Z, Y, X axis much easier. And so say we want our line to shoot out forward on this Z axis, this blue world axis. So from the direction, we can just uncheck this and say Z, 1. So now this is going to shoot out forward from the Z axis. If we wanted to shoot out backwards from the Z axis, we could say negative 1. Similarly, if we wanted to go up, we could say 1 on the the y-axis, and if we have these, say, 1 and 1, it's going to go at a 45-degree angle. So let's just choose 0 and have z1, which will shoot it forward on the z-axis. Now, you could set if you want this to be in world space or local space. Um, we're just going to leave it as self. We just wanted to shoot forward on the Z of this game object. Now distance, this is sort of an, an interesting one. If you hold your mouse over here it will say the length of the ray, set it to negative one for infinity. I would suggest you never do this, okay? We never want to set this to infinity. In fact we only want to set the ray as long as we think we'll actually need it. So the general thinking is the longer the ray, the more performance that it will take as the more things it might hit or it will have to calculate. So for example, 100 is already pretty generous. So maybe your gun only shoots 40 or 50. You probably don't want to ray cast past that. So in this case, I'm just going to set it to 20, which is already plenty for what we're doing in our scene. So it's going to shoot out the line from here in the Z direction, 20 units, which is essentially meters in unity. Okay, so then we want to, we are going to have an event here if we hit something. So we can say object was hit. So if we hit something, it's going to go over to this next state. And we'll just call it object hit. We'll call this first one raycast forward. Now of course we want to store did we hit something. So did we hit something? I'm going to call this hit object and it will save whatever we raycast it into. Oh, and that's my bad. I even did that wrong. Okay, so store did hit. It's just going to store a bool of whether we hit something or not. So I don't actually want to save that. I, I have an event that will trigger for me. I want to store the hit object, and that's what I want right there. It will store what's hit. It will also can store the hit point, which is uh, get the world position. We have the hit normal. So this is where it was hit on the object, and we can store the hit distance. So I'll get this one. Now, this is another important one right here. If you hold your mouse over repeat interval, it says set how often to cast a ray. Zero for once, as in don't repeat, just fire one time. Once for every frame, two for every other frame, and et cetera, three for every third frame, so on and so forth. Now, why would we want this? Well, in most cases, I guess it depends. In some cases, you just want it to fire once. So, for example, if we're firing from a gun, and this is triggered by some kind of trigger on a gun, we want to set it to zero because we want it just to shoot out one time. Okay? 
If we set it to one, it's going to go to every frame. As you can see, there's no every frame option on this action. But I don't suggest you raycast every frame. So raycasting is fairly performance heavy. That being said, if you have a raycast you know, every frame and you just have a game with one in them, you're probably going to be just fine. Okay, if you have a hundred enemies walking around, or even say 20 enemies, or you're shooting, you know, 50 bullets per second, then you probably want to adjust this to be something more reasonable. And on every frame, if we're running a device at 60 frames per second, that means we're firing off a raycast 60 times every second, which is, you know, unnecessary. As a player or something else, it's probably not going to move out of the way within 1 60th of a second. So for my case, for example, I'm going to set it to every other, which is already reducing the load by half. Um, for layer masks, we're going to just ignore this for now and uh, not worry about it. As far as the debug goes, I'm not sure if this debug ray works or not. I'm going to click it, and I guess we're going to find out, because at one point it wasn't working correctly. So let's hit play and see if we can see the raycast in the debug, which would be super helpful. So here's our game view. Let's change to our scene view. And you know what? We can see it. So as we can see, it's shooting forward in this Z direction. It's shooting every other frame. However, the, the debug doesn't really show that that well, and that's fine. And it's going exactly from the center of the object. So if we grab this and we rotate it around, you can see that it stopped because we've hit this hit object. And why don't we just go back to this one here and have a look at the debug information and the store hit object was the sphere, that's correct, and the distance was 3.4. So this is a really awesome way to just do simple raycasting. Now we can't not talk about raycasting without talking about layers, but I just wanted to leave that till the end rather than to talk about it at the beginning. Okay, so let's talk layers. If you want to learn more about layers, check out our module or our course on layers that will go into a little more detail. But for the main part, layers are something that, you know, put our objects on, you know, so-called different planes of existence so that they don't interact with each other. You know, sometimes we want things to, for example, pass through each other or we don't want them to, you know, interact with each other in any any sort of way. And I'm by default everything's sort of on the default layer, right? We've created everything and therefore it should always interact with each other. But maybe in a case we don't want our gun, for example, to be able to hit a ghost and you know this is our ghost and I have a couple of layers that I've already set up but let's just say he's on the enemy level or our enemy layer go back to our cube and then we'll say layer mask one we just want one layer mask and we only want it to hit the default layer we wanted to ignore all these other layers including the enemy layer so if we hit play and we rotate this around, we can see now that it, it completely ignores this cube. So it's generally considered good practice to only raycast to the layers that you need instead of raycasting to every single layer. So when I'm setting up raycasting, I typically only raycast to the enemies, the player, and the level layer. And I will ignore raycasting into sensors by accident, into water, post-processing, even the default layers, so that we are just raycasting to what we need. And so don't forget to set up one for your level so that you raycast into walls and so that your, you know, your players or your guns or stuff like that don't accidentally see through walls. Now there is an option here to invert the mask which means that instead of raycasting only to these layers, it will only ignore these layers. So it's set to default. Let's hit play. 
And this means that this object, since it's on the default layer, wouldn't be able to raycast itself or its you know, buddies that are on the default layer. But if we turn it around, it should be able to raycast onto this uh, sphere because it's on the enemy layer. So that's a little tip on how to use layers with Raycast and to improve the performance. So again, just to review, the direction is set. You can just set by using ones in the direction you want it to be. Just looking at this little gizmo, so we want it towards the Z direction, you know, the Y direction, the X direction. You should always set the distance because we don't want it to be set to infinity or even 100 if we don't need it. In most cases, you just want to be raycasting from the game object itself. Otherwise, you could set a position in world space of where you want to start. That gets messy pretty quick. Now, almost all the time, we want to see what we've hit. And, you know, you may or may not want the distance or the normal the point. And again, I do suggest setting up filters with just the layers that you want to use. When you're ready to have this in game production, make sure you turn off the debug because we don't need that firing in the editor all the time, which will cause a little bit of a performance hit. And if we have a whole bunch of them, that may not be great. Now, right after this, don't forget to check out the next lecture, the next module, where I'm going to talk about line casting, which is very similar to ray casting with one key difference. So check that out in the next module.